Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, and uh oh, Spaghetti O Loki Season 2 has just thrown us a big curveball. If you're still wondering what just happened, then this is the video for you. Throughout it, we're going to be going over the final few scenes and discussing how Victor Timely's untimely death could still pave the way for He Who Remains to emerge. Heavy spoilers there, well, no, we've spoiled it already, um, but the first thing I want to talk about is the pruning of Ravona Renslayer. This video will contain clips from the trailer that haven't been in the series yet though, so be warned and get yourself pruned if you don't want to get ruined. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is a short and sweet explanation for what's happened with Ravona Renslayer. In the entry, she gets pruned by X5, which is sort of a reversal of Season 1, Episode 4. During that, Mobius was pruned by Hunter D90, and this came under the orders of Ravona Renslayer. In Season 2, Episode 4, we see both D90 and Ravona getting pruned, which flips the script in an ironic way. Now, looking at the trailer, we actually have some shots of Ravona in the void, which is where she's clearly coming face to face with Elioth. That's still down there, and I think we'll watch her escape from the void and see she goes on a similar journey to Sylvie and Loki. I'm guessing that D90 will get killed by Elioth as a demonstration of how dangerous it is, but he may also work alongside Ravona to help bust her out. Either way, the void is the perfect place for some variant cameos, and I'd love to see the Loki variants we met last time returning for this series too. Now, as for Victor Timely, him getting spaghettified, it, to be fair, it probably had you like. I mean, how can he be the one? if he's dead. However, 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 his death actually makes sense if you're able to grasp the timely wimely wibbly wobbly stuff going on with the show. Now in episode 3 we watch the bootstrap paradox playing out in full effect with he who remains instructing Ravona to leave Victor Timely the TVA manual. This had to be done by her as Ms. Minutes isn't actually able to physically interact with objects and thus someone like Ravona was needed to act as a messenger. Now interestingly, you might notice that episode 3 starts off in the sacred timeline, but when Loki and Mobius jump to the future, this then becomes a branched one. So he who remains clearly carried this out for a specific reason, and this shows that his own creation is linked by the fact that he himself has to be created through a branch in reality. I think Ryan Ari, I think bloody Ryan Ari came up with this first, but looking at it, it makes a lot of sense. Shut the f up, Ryan Ari! Victor Timely is on the sacred timeline because this is the one that sets up the events that will eventually lead to the loom exploding, creating a far more expansive multiverse. The loom explodes because it can't handle all the timelines and now the multiverse has truly opened up with there being an infinite number of realities created. The loom had just been keeping things to a certain number, but it overloading in the show opens up everything. Now, I believe that it's in one of these realities that he who remains is born and this then allows him to continue on. The buck being dropped off in the sacred timeline takes it to Timely who then puts things in effect that lead to the loom being destroyed. Had he given it to another then they might end up having some technology that could fix the loom and therefore he needs to find a version of himself that's completely useless. That's definitely the case with Timely as well as he's a con man who, though able to make and design things, doesn't seem as adept as the other Kangs that we've encountered, except for the one who got beat by ants. Now, the reason that the timeline's considered the sacred one is because this is the one that Victor Timely's on. He who remains knows that he's crucial to his own creation and thus he's pruned the other realities and just left this one. That's the reason why it's classed as the sacred timeline because Victor Timely goes on to create He Who Remains. He Who Remains prunes the timelines and takes things under control and then sends the book back to Timely so the cycle can continue. It's the perfect bootstrap paradox that keeps everything in place and thus he who remains can he who remains at the top. Now, I think the release schedule, it's kind of messed things up with the way these stories are being told. Technically, I think this series is happening before the events of Quantumania as we pick up immediately after the events of the first season. That happened after the segue in Endgame and then went off into its own thing. Thus, when the loom blows up, several of the Kangs can branch off, explaining why th there's so many in the Colosseum. That might be me just grasping at things, but looking at how things are released, I'd imagine that's how it's all playing out. When it comes to stacking my Blu-rays in, in chronological order, I must insist, I'm going to stick these two seasons after Endgame and then Quantum Mania further on. Either way, I think He Who Remains needed the loom to be destroyed, which then helps to open up the other realities. Now what I then think happens is that the TVA is destroyed and everyone on it is sent back to where they were in the timeline. This is why when we watch the trailers, we can see Loki time slipping and he pops up in front of a jet ski shop. I believe that this is where Mobius will be at and we'll see his real life on the timeline. Now these people need to be put back here so he who remains can recruit them as at some point everything needs to be reset. 
Now this is a similar thing to what happened with Miss Minutes 2. As we know, she was an AI that He Who Remains reprogrammed, and this was so she could work at his side. The Miss Minutes we follow outlives He Who Remains, and thus there needs to be a point in which she recruits the initial version. It can't just be two floating around, and thus at some point she needed to be wiped out. This is what we saw happening during episode 4, and I believe the TVA agents needed to go through this too. We can't have a TVA intact when He Who Remains arrives, cause then he'll be behind where these people are chronologically. Thus the reset was inevitable, and it needed to wipe the slate clean so everything can start up again. Having these key figures put back in place will allow them to then start the journey, and this will in turn lead to the TVA. So this big thing at the end, it actually makes a lot of sense, and it could also send things in a direction that we're already aware of. As we know from Quantumania, there was an exile who turned against the council and was then cast out. This is the one who would go on to become Kang in Quantumania, who I also think is actually he who remains. Though he was seemingly killed at the end of the film, I think he just went into another part of either the multiverse or quantum realm itself. Now him instructing Ravona to do something that eventually led to Victor's death could also show his plans playing out perfectly. If he is the exile then he's obviously being cast out and has likely realised what needs to be done. He who remains touched upon the multiversal war that was caused by his variants and this is why the TVA was set up. He who remains was all that there was because he was all that remains and this came after taking out all his other variants. This was likely done through the war with him killing the entirety of the rest of the council. Make no mistake, this is a war between him and the others, and thus him taking out Victor's one less Kang that he has to worry about. If this does take place after Quantumania, then it makes sense why he was sent there too. Sending someone from another reality into where a Kang doesn't exist may help to mitigate this effect. As we know, incursions are a big thing as well, and they have the potential to destroy two Earths. Sending someone from another reality into one where a Kang doesn't exist, this might actually help to mitigate this effect. We're still unsure exactly how incursions work in the MCU, though they do operate differently from the comics. From what's been said so far, they tend to be caused by someone from one world who then goes into another and then the two worlds are pulled into each other. This is so they can sync up, and doing this on a quantum level may stop the effect, hence why the exile was sent there. Now Quantumania 2 takes place on the sacred timeline, and thus Kang would be aware of this reality. He may also know that this is where Timely was, and thus want to remain on that one with it being his central home. As we said, this is the one where Victor Timely was, and giving him the book then created the branch. This did show that Victor wasn't always meant to get it, but I still think he may have become an inventor due to what we see him doing as a child. On top of this, I also believe that Loki will be the one who takes over the position of he who remains while the war is going on. Someone needs to lead whilst that's happening, and thus I think Loki will end up in this spot eventually. With the stuff going on with Magus as well, they may even make him the villain of Secret Wars instead of it being Kang. Kang was never the bad guy for that story in the comics, and both its iterations centred around Doctor Doom. The way the MCU's heading, it seems like it's going to be whoever's in the hot seat, and Loki also has the precedent for this in the comics. During the Agent of Asgard arc, we discovered an older version of Loki was ruling over everything, and controlling things from the shadows. I'd love it if it was revealed that the Richard E. Grant version or something was the one that was in the far future, even beyond where He Who Remains was controlling this entire loop, and this was all done so Loki could put himself on top. It would make He Who Remains a pawn in that plan too, and also explain how he had the script that outlined what Loki and Sylvie were going to say. I think there's still a lot of ways they can take things, and even though this is all part of a loop, it's still packed with a lot of surprises. I felt like I had this entire thing sussed out, especially when Loki pruned himself, but clearly there's way more going on with it. I still think that He Who Remains is creating his own origin, but we are going to see how this whole thing plays out. Obviously though, let me know your comments below. Did I make a lick of sense? I'm sure, uh, well I'm hoping there's some stuff in there that at least makes sense, but yeah, if you have any other theories, drop them below. It's all time travel, all timey wimey wibbly wobbly stuff, and yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it because there's so many things to discuss. Please drop a like on the video as well, and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. We get early access to videos every week, and it goes such a long way to helping us out. If you want to get some heavy spoilers merch, we've also got a t-shirt line located below the video that will let you pick up tops like our Loki one, Theory Time one, House of Dragon stuff, Ahsoka tees and more. 
We drop new designs on there all the time too, just like our classic Breakdown Versus one, so definitely head over there right after this. Without the way, huge thank you for sticking through the video. I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.